no matter what we say, no matter what we push, no matter what kind of information we have, medicine is a covenant between a patient and a doctor. And in today's environment, that's a hard thing because, you know, medicine's turned into a big business. So as opposed to my giant numbers, I'm going to talk to you about an N of two, a very difficult case, a young man I dealt with this summer in the confines of big business, in the confines of drug shortages this summer, curative therapy of drugs that are 40 years old, and we don't have the drug. That's unbelievable. When I took the Hippocratic Oath about 35 years ago, I remember what it said. David showed you yesterday. He said, do no harm. Hippocrates wrote that 2,500 years ago. It's still very, very, very true today. But how do I deal with it in today's environment of managed care? How do I deal with it when I'm told what to do by uh, bean counters and timers? In today's headlines in the Chicago Tribune, which just came through on my computer this morning, turns out that two insurance companies manage 70% of all um, of all insured people in 370 of the major metropolitan areas in the United States and in the state of Alabama, two companies control 95% of all managed care. I wonder what Hippocrates would say about that. Do no harm is actually what you all know, but he actually said far more than that, and do no harm actually means, uh, needs some interpretation, certainly in oncology. Uh, Lenny sitting in the audience who's a pediatric oncologist. By definition, we can cure 60, 65% of the rare kind of child with leukemia, the myeloid leukemia. At diagnosis, we tell the family, your child will go into the ICU. Everything we do is based on population. Everything we do is, we do is based on risks and benefits. I've done a lot of harm in the last 40 years. I've probably seen 3,500 kids in the last 35 years. We average about 100 a year. We do a lot of harm. We put children in ICUs. We amputate. It's all in the name of what's good, what we hope is a high quality cure. I should remind you a little bit more about what Hippocrates said before I tell you about this difficult case in the context of all of this. Hippocrates said, above do no harm, you do the best for the patient. And in the Greek, it says also family. He said, take no sexual favors. He said, maintain patient confidentiality, and he said a lot of other things. Um, you fast forward 2,400 years, and William Osler, who is the founder of probably all modern American training as a Canadian physician, said this. He kind of put doctors on a pedestal, because we're supposed to be very wise, and we're supposed to impose everything on the wicked and the foolish. It's kind of like Passover and the four kids. I could put a little bit of emphasis on what uh, Laura Ziskin might say, because among other things, she produced Spider-Man. And I think an easy quote from this would be, in Spider-Man, when the uncle realizes that Spider-Man has all these powers, he says, with great power comes great responsibility. So with that great responsibility, I want to show you a case that I had never seen before. So this is a young man that came from his uh, private physician. And you can see the heart on the right side. The heart is a big bump on the left, and then you see two what look like clover leaf lumps on the right, on this side, and uh, they didn't belong there. And the young man was basically asymptomatic. Sent the child to the surgeon, and the surgeon said, oh, it's probably a lymphoma or a thymoma. We'll biopsy it. If it's a lymphoma, we'll figure out how to treat it. We cure almost everybody with lymphomas. If it's a thymoma, I'll take it out, and we're done with it. To everybody's surprise, this mediastinal mass, this middle mass, turned out to be what's called a synovial cell sarcoma. You usually find it in an extremity. There's only about 60 cases in the world published where it's in the lung only. How many of you seen Lenny? You've seen one more than I did. I've never seen it. So how am I going to deal with a case that I've never seen before after 35 years? I did what anybody else would do. I'd call my gurus. I spoke to my experts at some small institutions called Harvard, MD Anderson, the National Cancer Institute, and a former trainee of mine is actually running the sarcoma program at um, St. Jude. So I got the anecdotes. Everybody together had seen a few cases. So we took the best judgment about what to do 
after this was taken out. The heart is the big one on the right and on the left, patient's lying this way, the big lump right over here, that's all tumor. It's occupied a third of the right middle lobe of the lung. So the surgeon took it all out. We got an opinion on what to do with this because it is an unbelievable rare case. We just couldn't find any examples. The catch is, I was full of humility when I did this, so what did I do? I found a doctor I trusted because this young man happens to be me. And I suddenly found myself in the case of being a patient with a disease that I couldn't read about, I knew too much about. We sent it off, we did all the genetics, we did everything. And the reason I'm wearing a hat, because you know I usually look like my brother, the stunt double, is I didn't want to give it away. I am four months from, uh, I finished therapy about six weeks ago after having the surgery out. And I, I wanted to put this up, because medicine is an art. Medicine is subjective. We heard about huge amounts of information. We have huge amounts of information. T.S. Eliot said all information is not knowledge, and I'll add that all knowledge is not wisdom. And we're dealing with not a binary yes or no and knowing what to do. We made some subjective examples, and then, you know, as opposed to everything we've been hearing, medicine is still an art. Uh, Jay asked me to put a O. Oh, Henry twist on this, and I figured since I wrote an essay, what I did on my summer vacation, and it's published in a journal that I edit that goes to about 5,000 pediatric oncologists, the least I can do is show you my x-ray and then let Jay ask me some questions about it because I thought this was a good way to bring everybody back down to earth. Thank you.